Welcome to Mole Math, Gram Formula Mass. First, we must interpret chemical formulas. Chemical formulas tell you what elements are in a compound. We call that qualitative analysis. The simplest whole number proportion of ions in an ionic compound, also called the empirical formula, it's quantitative analysis because it gives you quantity. And the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule of molecular compound, called a molecular formula because you're dealing with, you know, molecules. And we call that quantitative analysis too because we're dealing with number. So let's take a look at this formula here. We have calcium nitrate. Now according to this, we have calcium, nitrogen, and oxygen. That is qualitative analysis. It tells you what elements are in the compound. It also tells us that there's one mole of calcium atoms for each mole of compound. It also tells us that, ooh, there's a two outside the parentheses. Now, just like in math, whatever's outside the parentheses multiplies everything inside the parentheses. So there's going to be two moles of nitrogen atoms per uh, mole of compound, and there's going to be six moles of oxygen atoms per mole of compound. Three times two is six. Now, sometimes we can put, we can also add these up. There's 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9 total moles of atoms per mole of compound. So if we were to decompose calcium nitrate into its original elements, calcium, nitrogen, and oxygen, we'd have a total of 9 moles of atoms for every mole of compound we decompose. This is quantitative analysis because you're dealing with numbers. Now, sometimes it's important to throw a coefficient in front of a formula. The coefficient multiplies everything in the formula. So, for example, in this formula, we have three nitrogens and 12 hydrogens and one phosphorus and four oxygens. All right? But if we throw a coefficient of three in front of it, that multiplies all of those by three. We now have, instead of nine, instead of three nitrogens, we now have nine nitrogens. Instead of 12 hydrogens, we now have 36 hydrogens. Instead of one phosphorus, we now have three phosphorus. Or is that phosphoride? I have no idea. Three phosphorus. And we have four times three is 12 oxygens. So that's what a coefficient does, multiplies everything that comes after. It's also important to know the difference between empirical and molecular formulas. So let's take a look at that. Empirical formulas are the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. And we use these for ionic compounds. For example, in NaCl, there is a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium ions to chloride ions in the compound. So if there's like a million sodium ions, there'll be a million chloride ions. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Calcium nitrate, there's a one-to-two ratio of calcium ions to nitrate ions. We can also look at it in terms of the ratio for each element. There's a one-to-two to six ratio of calcium to nitrogen to oxygen. And this compound, there's a three to one ratio of sodium ions to phosphate ions. Or we could break it down to its uh, smallest terms. We have three sodiums for every one phosphorus to every four oxygens. You can't simplify that any further. For molecular formulas, this is the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule, which is why they call it a molecular formula. It may also be an empirical formula. It may already be in the simplest whole number ratio. For example, water. H2O contains two hydrogens and one oxygen in each molecule. Now that is the molecular formula because that's the actual number of atoms in the molecule. But it also is a two to one ratio. So this molecular formula is also an empirical formula. It's the simplest whole number ratio. But this molecule here, which contains two carbons and six hydrogens for a formula of C2H6, this is a molecular formula. And notice it's in a two to six ratio. That is not the simplest whole number ratio. This is not an empirical formula, which is fine because the molecule does have two carbons and six hydrogens. So you would expect that to be the ratio between it. But if you're asked to make the empirical formula, well, to simplify the two to six ratio is really simple. It's just a one to three ratio. This molecule, which is called glucose, contains one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. That's C6. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens. That's H12. And one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens, or O6. C6H12O6. You've seen this before. A 6 to 12 to 6 ratio. And the reason why that is the way it is is because that's the actual number of atoms of each element in this compound. It's not the simplest whole number ratio, though. A 6 to 12 to 6 ratio simplifies to a 
one to two to one ratio. And there may be any there may be other compounds that have this same proportion of carbon to hydrogen and oxygen. We generally call those carbohydrates. Gram formula mass. Ah, we're finally down to it. Now, atomic mass is the mass of an atom in atomic mass units. For example, hydrogen has an atomic mass of one, so one atom of hydrogen weighs one atomic mass unit. But we don't really deal with individual atoms so much. We deal with quantities that we can actually work with. So we have a number called the mole. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything is the number it takes for an atom to weigh its atomic mass in grams. So one atom of hydrogen weighs one AMU, but a mole of hydrogen atoms will weigh one gram. So you could think of the mole as a conversion factor between atomic mass units and grams. The gram formula mass is the sum of atomic masses of every element in the compound taken to the nearest tenth. And the reason we don't go to the nearest whole number, the reason we take it to the tenths, this way we have an extra digit, we have an extra significant figure. And we're not robbing ourselves of significant figures when it comes time to do calculations. So take your formula mass to the tenths place and be consistent. Every time you do it, go to the tenths place. For example, uh, for potassium bromide, potassium has an atomic mass of 39.09. Oop, that's actually 39.1 when you go to the tenths place. And bromine is 79.9 when you go to the tenths place. And there's one of each in this compound. So when you add the two atomic masses, tenths place plus tenths place gives you, ha, huh, tenths place. That way we've got four sig figs to work with when we're going to use this for math. The units are grams per mole. So every mole weighs this many grams. Now, magnesium chloride is just slightly more complicated because there's two chlorines in the formula. So magnesium weighs 24.3 for each magnesium, and there's only one of them. Chlorine weighs 35.45. Ah, this 5 bumps that 4 up, so 35.5 for chlorine. But there's two of them, so you've got to take that into consideration. So 24.3 for the magnesium, 2 times 35.5 for the two chlorines, and that gives you your formula mass in grams per mole. Now remember that, because we're going to be using that in a little bit. 95.3 grams per mole. Okay, we'll come back to that. Now, iron 3 sulfate looks complicated, but it's not. Iron is 55.8. Sulfur is 32.06. Oh, that runs up to 32.1. 32.1. Oxygen is 16.0. So now you just got to take into consideration we have two irons at 55.8. We have three sulfurs at 32.1 each. And we have 12 oxygens at 16.0 each. Now do you see why I showed you how to interpret the formula before we did formula mass? Okay, so... 2 times the mass of the iron, 3 times the mass of the sulfur, and 12 times the mass of the oxygen gives us a total mass of 399.9 grams per mole. Great. Woo! Yippee! Formula mass is very useful for doing mole calculations, as I'm going to show you right now, because it's got the units of grams and moles in it. So it can be used as a conversion factor to convert grams to moles and moles to grams. So if you want to convert grams to moles, simply divide the given mass by the gram formula mass. So if we have MgCl2, oh, what was the formula mass of that again? Oh yeah, 95.3. That was MgCl2. Okay, so we're going to take 45.2 grams and divide it by the formula mass, 95.3 grams per mole. And that'll give us, after grams cancel, it'll give us 0.474 moles. So we can use formula mass to convert grams to moles. And we can convert moles to grams using the same conversion factor, except in this case, instead of dividing, if we start with moles, you multiply the given moles by gram formula mass. <laughs> Isn't that clever? Multiply. So how many grams of magnesium chloride represented by 3.2 moles? Well, we take those 3.2 moles, and we're going to multiply them by the formula mass. Hey, look, there it is. And when we multiply that through, the moles will cancel out and give us 300 grams. Notice we have two sig figs here, three sig figs here. So we're going to have two sig figs in our final answer. That's what the line is doing up over the zero. And that's formula mass and what you can do with formula mass. We're going to take a look at some other applications of formula mass in upcoming videos. Take care.